Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to build an interactive map dashboard showing pizza places in New York City. And we're going to do this from scratch in Snowflake. Snowflake has great native support for location, also known as geospatial data. And the map that we make today is the visualization layer for a complete location data platform architecture that we have published in the Snowflake Solution Center. The really exciting part about this is that you can build this location data platform alongside the rest of your business data. In the past, location data often sat with specialized teams using different tools. But by building alongside the rest of your business data, you can calculate powerful location-based metrics. For example, a meal delivery company can look at which areas of the city have the highest order size, or a brand can look at which distributor locations they should target to increase sales. Okay, let's get started and build our map. Here I am in Snowflake's SnowSite web UI. Now for the demo that we're doing today, all of the work is going to be in the browser through this UI, which means there's nothing to install and you don't need to know how to code. Um, the most code we're going to be using today is running some SQL statements. If you don't have a Snowflake account yet, um, you can create one with a 30-day free trial, uh, and that will give you access um, to everything you need to run the uh, tutorial today. So let's get started here. First, we're going to install Honeycomb Maps. Honeycomb Maps is a Snowflake native app that lets you build map applications directly within Snowflake. And so to install it, we're going to click on Data Products and Marketplace here on the left. Then we'll search for the app. And here it is. Now there's a 30 day free trial for the app itself. So I'm gonna start that trial. I'm gonna click on get here and click on start trial. For options, I can keep this default name and then I'll click on get. Now this is going to go ahead and start installing the application into my Snowflake environment. So when I run this app, it's not going to be sending data to anybody or another server. It's actually going to install right into my Snowflake environment. Okay, so we've installed it. Now I can click on configure. And this is going to bring us to step two where we're actually activating the app so it's going to ask for some permissions here i'll click grant and then i'll click on activate now this activation step uh, usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes um, so i'm going to let this go and then jump back once it's installed and we can start creating our map okay so while the honeycomb app is activating i'm going to go ahead and jump to the next step which is to get our proof our point of interest data and we're going to use a great resource that snowflake provides called the u.s real estate data set this is available also through marketplace i've already installed it in this account um, but it's really simple to just get the data uh, and add it into your snowflake account and now that we've gotten the data um, I'm going to open up a new SQL worksheet and run a, a query to make sure that we can access it. And I'm going to copy and paste this query from the Snowflake Quick Start um, that accompanies this video. It's called Viewing Location Data on an Interactive Map, if you want to go ahead and look it up. Um, and I see there's an extra semicolon that got pasted, so I'll take that out. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and run this query. Okay, great. I see uh, 10 rows here, which is what I was expecting, showing uh, names of pizzerias in New York City, as well as the latitude and longitude of uh, the pizzeria. And this is the data that we're going to show on our map. Um, and our map tool Honeycomb is going to use the latitude and longitude columns uh, to determine where to put the points on the map. Now, before I do that, there's one more thing I need to do, and this is actually really important. I need to give the Honeycomb app access to this data. So by default, 
the Honeycomb app we just installed doesn't have any access to data in your Snowflake account. Um, and that's by design for security reasons. So what we can do is grant privileges on the database, US real estate, uh, to the application. Oh, and here it's Honeycomb Data Explorer. We're actually gonna, we have our application named Honeycomb Maps, which is the new name for the app. So I'm gonna change that. And then I'm going to run this line here. Okay, great. So now that we've uh, given the Honeycomb Maps application uh, permissions to view this real estate data, uh, we can go ahead and, and start making our maps. Okay, so now I've gone back to the Honeycomb Maps app um, and it looks like it finished activating. There's one thing I need to do before I start making a map. And that is to click on connections and then click on review and allow this connection. And what this does is it lets Honeycomb uh, go and grab base maps uh, from an external map service. So I'll just click connect here, wait a few seconds, and then I see that it's successfully connected. Okay, so now I can go ahead and click launch. Okay, and now it's going to ask me to log into Snowflake again. Let me go ahead and grab a password and log in. Okay, here we are in the Honeycomb Maps application. And we want to make our map of pizzerias in New York City. So what we're going to do here is click on start with a blank map. Then we're going to click on edit map in the bottom right here. We'll click on data sources and add a data source. Now we're going to get uh, data from Snowflake and we're going to use custom SQL statement. So let's click on open SQL editor and I'm going to copy and paste a query uh, again from the quick start that's available on the Snowflake website. And we can see here that this query is going to pull data from this US real estate table. Um, so I'll go ahead and click run query. And if you get an error here, it's probably because the Snowflake app doesn't have permissions to uh, pull the data from your table. So make sure you ran that grant uh, permissions statement that I talked about right before this. Okay, so the query ran successfully. We have uh, about 2,300 rows, uh, and we have a uh, name of the pizzeria, latitude, longitude, uh, as well as a little more information. So I'll click Save and Close here, and this will go ahead and add these points to the map. Okay, great. We have a map. Um, here are all the pizza places in New York City. So we can see that it's automatically created a map layer for me, um, but let's enhance this a little bit. So here's the point layer that it automatically made. I'm going to go ahead and change the color. I think blue would be a nice color here. Um, and then I'm going to turn on tooltips. So tooltips will let me hover over specific points and see information for that point. So going to click enable tooltips and then show the POI name column. And then maybe I can show the category too. Here we go. Well, okay, the category is pizza restaurant for all of them. So <laughs> I'll disable that. Um, but now we have a map along with points of interest, the pizza places, uh, and we can see the name. So I think we're doing pretty well so far. So the next step, um, I want to make this map a little bit more usable. I know what's going on here, uh, but that's because I made the map. But if somebody else comes across this map at the company, I want them to understand what's on the map and how they can use it. And so to do that, I'm going to add a title and a legend to the map. And to do that, I'll click on components here on the edit map sidebar, and then I'll click on add component. 
The first thing that we'll add um, is a title card, which is uh, the default component type. I'm going to keep it on the left-hand side. Um, and then for the title, I'm going to put pizza restaurants in New York City. And then subtitle, let me just say data from Snipflake. And now I want to add a legend as well. So to do that, I'll click on add component, switch the component type to legend, uh, and I'll keep it on the left side. So now uh, the legend will show the different layers on the map, uh, as well as if we're coloring the layers based on an attribute, it will show a nice um, key and a, a scale here. And with the legend, I can turn layers on and off. Okay, now let's say I want to go one step further. And rather than just showing the individual points, I want to do an analysis of the density. And so let's show, let's add a density layer to the map. I'll click on map layers, add map layer. Um, and now you can see that it's automatically set to a honeycomb or an H3 layer. This is exactly what I need. Um, if it's not, you can click on layer type and switch it to the, la the um, honeycomb layer. I'm going to name this pizza density. And then and we can see that it's showing these H3 cells uh, and aggregating data in real time. If I turn off the point layer, I can see this even better. Now, it's, it's going to be changing the resolution as I zoom in and out, um, which is great for some kinds of maps. But in this case, I want it to be fixed. I want it to be uh, H3 resolution 8. So what I can do is click on fixed and then adjust that to be 8. And now I have a really nice layer here. And let's make sure that we're uh, coloring this appropriately. So I'm going to say that here we want the color to be based on the number of pizza places in that hexagon. So let's do a count uh, of the ID. And here we go. Now I can see which places have the highest density of uh, pizza restaurants, pizzerias. If I want to see some numbers here, I can enable tooltips for this layer and then see uh, both the H3 index uh, as well as the count of uh, the number of pizza places in that index. Uh, so this is really useful for putting some, some numbers to this visual. Speaking of numbers, um, let's add some more uh, metrics to this map. So I'm going to go to the components um, pane over here, and then I'm actually going to move the legend to the right by clicking here, and that will free up some space right here for me to show um, both a, a big number component and then an area filter. So I'll click on add component to start with this big number uh, component. I'll switch the component type to big number. And I'm just going to show um, total restaurants. And then I'll leave the subtitle blank. I have one data source. And again, I just want a count of the IDs here. OK, great. I can see that there are 2,350 uh, restaurants in my data set. Now, if I had something like reviews, like a one through 10 review, I could do an average. That could be kind of interesting, but I'll just leave it as a count for now. And you know, this is fine, uh, but let's say I want to dive a little bit deeper and look at specific areas that I'm curious about. To do that, I can add a polygon filter. So I'll click add new component, uh, and then polygon filter, Keep it on the left-hand side. I'll name this uh, area filter. And then for input methods, uh, I'll just allow drawing on the map. Uh, Honeycomb also supports uploading a GeoJSON or selecting uh, from another data set that has polygons within it. For example, if we had a snowflake table with 
the um, borders of different neighborhoods in New York City, we could have that as a data source and then filter based on that, which could be pretty interesting. Uh, maybe that'll make its way into the advanced version of this video. Um, and then here it's asked to include which elements should filter. So this, uh, we want to filter everything. So we're going to filter the point layer. We're going to filter the density layer. And then we're going to filter this total restaurants component. Okay, so now that we've added this filter, uh, let's go ahead and try using it. So I'll click draw area. Um, it says click on the map to add points. Okay, so then I can click to outline an area on the map and then click back on the first point to finish. And now we have a polygon filter. And as soon as I drew this map, uh, it or drew this area, it instantly filtered the map uh, as well as the metric here for that area. And this is what's really powerful about Honeycomb is that I can make these interactive maps that calculate metrics in real time. So this is great for different business areas. For example, if a business is considering expansion, what markets should they serve? What's the, the size of those different markets? Now that I have this filter, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and download the map data within this area. Um, I could also download the boundary itself as a GeoJSON file. Once I'm done, I can click on Reset to get rid of this filter. So now that I've made this map, added a few different layers, uh, as well as added a metric and a filter, I'm ready to share this with my team. So let's go ahead and learn how to share it with others. First, we're going to do a few things to prep the map for sharing. We're going to click on Settings here, and we're going to set the initial map view. So let's, uh, I think that looks good. Click on Set to Current View. Um, and we can also choose whether to save active filters with the map. I'm not going to, um, but if you already had a specific area you were interested in and you had selected it, you could toggle this to on, uh, and that will save that filter with the map. Now I'll click on Save and Load Map. Uh, I'll enter a name for my map. I'm going to say New York City Pizza Overview, and then I'll click Save. Now the map is saved to Snowflake and will be accessible to others who have access to Honeycomb within your organization. You can share your map uh, with others on your team in two different ways. This first link up here, this is an editable map link. So if you give this to somebody, they'll be able to make changes to the map layers and to the components. Um, the second link is a read-only link. So this is great if you want to show your data to uh, your teammates without letting them edit the underlying map. So I'm going to click this read-only uh, URL. That will copy the URL to my clipboard, uh, and I'll try, try loading it. Okay, here we go. Here's uh, the exact map that we saved uh, loaded in a new tab. Now, every time a Honeycomb map loads, it's going to pull fresh data from Snowflake. And that means that data, that if data in our underlying tables changes, the map will update automatically. And this is great for data in tables that changes. For example, maybe some pizza restaurants are opening or closing, um, or we're having new data coming in. Uh, Honeycomb is a great way to share these interactive maps. That's it for this video. In this tutorial, we've taken data from a, a raw table with latitude and longitude and a name um, and turned it into an interactive map where we can zoom in and out, look at density layers, as well as calculate metrics on the fly uh, and filter for specific areas. And this is just scratching the surface of what you can do um, with Snowflake's geospatial capabilities extended with Snowflake native apps like Honeycomb Maps. If you have questions about Honeycomb Maps, feel free to reach out to support at honeycombmaps.com or just reach out to your Snowflake account team and mention Honeycomb Maps. Thanks.